Good morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome. If you are watching online, you are at Algona First United Methodist Church, and I am Pastor Cindy Finn. Well, we are actually on the last Sunday of Easter. Did you know that it's been Easter all along, all the way from when we actually celebrated the resurrection of Christ? It's been Easter Sunday, Easter all along. And we've been going through the book of Acts, and we are down to the very end, to Paul's very last journey. They call it his fourth missionary journey, but his very last journey. And so we'll be completing the book of Acts today. And if you'll notice, our very last song, our closing song today is Up From the Grave He Arose, which is a very classic Easter song. We have to end Easter with an Easter song. We have to. So I'm just excited to complete this um, journey of Acts with you and to talk more about the Apostle Paul. Though, let's begin our time of worship with our call to worship. You'll find it on the screen. You'll find it in your bulletin. We await God's instructions for our lives. The time is coming when our service will be needed here. Wait, listen, the time is near. Amen. One of my very favorite books from childhood, it's actually a set of books. It starts with The Hobbit, and it goes through the three books of The Lord of the Rings. Very favorite books. I think I've read them several times. The author's name is J.R.R. Tolkien, and he, is, he was a, um, someone who knew C.S. Lewis, and, and, and he wrote books that had a very faith basis. So the Lord of the Rings is a story of a hobbit. Hobbits are um, uh, little smaller than a dwarf, little creatures with furry feet, big furry feet. And the Lord of the Rings is about a hobbit by the name of Frodo. Now, Frodo receives a ring from his uncle Bilbo. And this ring is a magical ring. And when he puts it on, puts it on a finger, he becomes invisible. And for Bilbo, his uncle, it was quite the the wonderful thing because he was able to trick a dragon and steal gold from the dragon. But for Frodo, the ring is a burden. Because through a wizard named Gandalf, he learns that the ring is actually evil and was made by evil named Sauron. And the thing is, is every time Frodo puts the ring on to try and use it as his uncle did, evil could see him. And so he decided through some pushing um, from the wizard Gandalf that he needed to destroy the ring. And he needed to take a trip to do that. He needed to go to a place named Mordor and throw the ring into lava, which would destroy the the evil ring. He didn't want to take the trip. Hobbits don't want to go anywhere but stay home and eat and have fun in their homes. But he knew he had to because if he didn't, evil would come into the world. You see, I think that's kind of the way that the Apostle Paul felt, though he didn't have a magic ring. But I do believe that this last journey, he felt like he had to. He had to take this journey. He had to go back to Jerusalem. He had to go to Rome. Even though his life would be threatened, he knew he had to in order to complete the call that God put on his life, the kind of call that would keep evil from coming into the world. The Apostle Paul, when he went to leave to to go to Jerusalem, his friends did not want him to go. They tried to keep him from going. They talked and they talked to him. But he decided he had to. And so he went to Jerusalem, and just as his friends had assumed, the minute he walked into Jerusalem, he was attacked. 
uh, uh, some of the Jewish elite, some of the, the folks who very much believed in the way of the Jewish people, attacked him. And in the attack, Roman soldiers saw it happening and decided, well, this must be a terrorist from Egypt. Why else would, would Jewish people people, important Jewish people, be attacking him. The Roman soldiers grab the Apostle Paul just as his friends were afraid would happen, and they arrest him. And they take him before a, a series of governors. The Bible lists a governor by the name of Festus and one by the, or Felix, and one by the name of Festus. And they, these governors pass him around because they try to charge him with something, but they really can't. I mean, all he wants them to know is that the hope of the resurrection is in Jesus Christ. He's also a Roman citizen, and so Roman citizens cannot be persecuted. Well, they can be persecuted, but they cannot be put to death in the traditional ways. So Governor Festus doesn't know what to do with them and takes figures, you know what, I need to take him before a king. And so he is set before a king by the name of Agrippa, and he spends years and years in prison, each time coming before the king, and each time new charges are brought up, and each time he is acquitted and he is sent back to his, his um, prison, and each time nothing sticks. So... It's not a good thing to be in prison for years and years. However, God uses this time. God allows the Apostle Paul to visit with people. People come and talk with him. But the most important thing that he does is he writes most of the New Testament while he is in prison. Most of what we rely on the, the book of Romans, the book of Philippians, the Ephesians. Most of those New Testament books we rely on to know wh who God is and who we are in God. The basis of our modern-day theology comes through those, those books that the Apostle Paul wrote while he was sitting in prison. God made good things come out of horrible things evil things, but God brought good out of it. Something that we can learn that no matter where we are in our lives, no matter what is happening in our lives, no matter if you are going through the worst thing you can think of, God is going to use the time to bring good to bring something wonderful to your life. I was having a conversation this last week with someone, and I told that someone, you may not see the good that's going on right now, but I guarantee someday you will look back and you will see how God worked in your life. It's the way with all of us. God works through us and brings good to all of our lives. Let's continue our time of worship with an opening hymn. Now, we have Julie with us this morning, and she's going to play the organ for us, and I just, uh, it's so much fun to hear the organ. And we're going to sing a song called Ask Ye What Great Thing I Know. It's number 163, and you'll notice that the hymnals are in the pews. And so if you'd like to follow along and see the music, Please use those hymnals, otherwise the words will be up on the screen. Um, this song, I will tell you right now, this song is, is one of my, it is my very favorite hymn in the whole world. This is my, this is my song. My kids know at my death, this is what they're playing at my funeral. So that's it. <laughs> Let's sing.
Join me in our opening hymn. Lord of amazing visions, prepare our hearts and our spirits this day to receive your glad tidings of an advocate. Help us make ready to be your disciples in all that we do, say, and think. For we ask this in the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So our announcements today, we're going to start with the Algona Crisis Closet. This is the mission of the month. And the Algona Crisis Closet is um, something fairly new to Algona, excuse me. And um, it is, um, I believe, oversaw by the, the Algona Police Department. Now, the cri what the Crisis Closet does is it helps families who maybe have experienced a crime in their homes or needed to leave their homes quickly because of a crime or because um, of something um, horrific that happened in their homes. So they're asking for things like clothing, bedding, um, toiletry items, feminine products, uh, even things like shoes, any, any coats maybe, anything that one might um, need if you had to leave your home quickly. Or maybe there was a crime done and the police had to take your, your bedding or, or something from your home. At least it would, um, these things would replace what the police had to take or what you needed and make a really horrible situation just a little bit better. On the back table, as you leave, there is a list, a little flyer that has a list of things that they accept, and you can bring those things to the church. And if you noticed when you came in the door today, there is a box in the breezeway as you come in by the office that if you want to bring something after the office is closed, you can drop that off. Now, in your bulletin, you have your little announcement sheet here. And I'm sorry if you're online, you don't have an announcement sheet, but you can go to our website and print one off. This, um, you'll notice there are several things. Monday night, we are still on lesson 43, but actually we're on lesson five. I don't know why it keeps saying 43, but there's Zoom information for our book study called. Six o'clock Monday night is our finance committee meeting. Zoom information is there. Tuesday, you remember, we have prayer and devotions at noon right here in the sanctuary. Pastor Karen leads us, and we send out a devotional by email every Tuesday. Trustees are at 7 p.m. with the Zoom information. Now, Wednesday night, um, please take off the upper room ringers and the junior high youth group. They, they have um, completed what they're going to do for the summer, but the seeker group is meeting yet at 5 p.m. on Wednesday night. Now, next week is a really big Sunday, huge, big Sunday, big, big, big. It's Pentecost, so wear your red, but it's also high school graduation Sunday, and so we have 11, if you can believe it, 11 high school graduates that will be here before you and, and talking to you and receiving um, our praise and um, excitement for them. So please, please, please don't miss next week. It is huge and big and fun and a way to lift up these high school seniors that you've watched grow up from very young and to support them. Are there announcements that you would like to bring forth? Is there anything you want us to know about? If you're online, you can put it here, and I would love to tell people about it. Okay, I, that's perfectly fine. Let's move on then to our conversations with God, our joys and our concerns. And um, please, please, please continue to lift up those who are affected by the coronavirus, though we are um, being released a little bit with our sanctions and the things that we have to do because the CDC has released, um, especially those who have been vaccinated, from wearing masks um, in, in, unless you're in a very crowded area, I think they're wanting you to continue that way, but we're going to, um, we received word from the bishop that we're following that, and so um, we're counting on you to decide about mask wearing and when you want to wear them to church. 
we are going to keep the dividers up for a little bit longer just to kind of keep us spread out a little bit. But I will tell you, I'm not checking vaccination cards at the door, so you don't have to show me that you've been vaccinated, but we're going to trust that you know what's best for yourself. And then um, next week, we'll have the doors open. You can come in the front doors, and um, we're going to try and do our children's sermon like we usually do, and maybe move just a little bit closer to being um, like we were before, nor what I would consider maybe normal. Um, so lift that up and, and prayer that, that the coronavirus, and especially in our area and um, around the world, behaves itself. We know that in India, it is not behaving itself. So please um, pray for those who are in India that they receive the vaccines that they need and the medical help that they need. Um, continue to pray for our church and our church committees and our leadership. Continue to pray for our country and the violence that, that continues in our country. Pray for our world. There's much violence around the whole world. Um, I would ask that you would lift up um, Dwayne Lewis of Clarion. He is Aaron Lewis's uncle. He did pass away yesterday. Um, so please lift up the Lewis family. And then, if you would, um, lift up little uh, Lorelei um, Edland. It was discovered this week that Lorelei, if you remember, she, she's um, Rita Buffington's great-granddaughter. She had several viruses, and we were praying for her little brother, um, Wyatt. But it was discovered this week that little Lolo, they call her Lolo, isn't that cute? They, uh, that she has leukemia. And um, so she received a port to begin treatment. I did learn yesterday that the type of leukemia she has has a 99% treatment and um, recovery rate. So that, I, I guess if you have to have leukemia, let's have one that we can cure. And, um, but it's still horrific. Um, little Lolo, I believe, is, is she five? five years old, uh-huh, so awfully young to have to go through something so big. So please lift her up. Are there others that you would lift up today that you would like us to know about? Okay. Let's take a moment then and offer silence before God and allow God to hear the prayers of our hearts. We'll follow this with a pastoral prayer, and then I'll ask you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Holy and gracious one, we thank you for stories in the Bible of early Christians, the early followers. We thank you that we can learn from them, that we can learn that you, Lord, that you filled them and equipped them to be able to spread your love to all people, that you not only spread it to just the Jewish people or just a few Gentiles, but to all people, regardless of race, regardless of color, regardless of how they, they lived, all people were given the opportunity to love you and to know your love. We thank you that the Holy Spirit was given, um, given the ability to offer us power and to equip us and continues to do that. And so help us as we learn how to be a church by going back to the beginning. Thank you that we know this many years later that we continue to know of your love and your power through your Holy Spirit, that we continue to know that all people are yours. Today, as we have lifted up prayers, we ask that you fill those who need healing, 
that you let those who need comfort and, and peace, that you are walking with them, that those who need to know that you are there, that you are just simply there, we ask that you spoil them with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we pray for those who are in the, in the middle of disaster, who are in the middle of war. We pray for those who are in the middle of famine and hunger. We know that you, gracious one, will send witnesses, that you will send people to help them, maybe one or all of us. We ask that you help us as we pray for ourselves. Help us to know that you, Lord, hold us, carry us, and comfort us throughout our whole lives. We today, as your disciples in 2021, ask that you will again remind us that you are in love with us and that you equip us and that you expect us to continue to spread your good news. We thank you for this. We thank you that we continue to have the model of your son, Jesus Christ, and that we continue to have his teaching and his healing and his prayers. And so today we pray to you that great prayer that he offered to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as Paul um, was being held in prison in Jerusalem, he decided that, that something more had to happen. He was tired of being brought before the king, King Agrippa and others, and, and he knew that he had to go forward. So he appealed to the highest court, which happened to be in Rome. And so um, he was assigned a, he probably had a guard, but he was assigned a soldier, and he, along with other prisoners, were put on a, a ship, and they were sent to Rome. Scripture tells us that this particular passage, this voyage, was really quite horrific. That they ran into storms and that they ran into um, all kinds of troubles. In fact, at one point, we're told that it was, the storms were so bad that they ended up try, needing to throw things overboard off of the ship. Things like food and, and the equipment that they brought. But one particular storm was so bad that they ended up running aground. And they ran aground at an island called, and I believe it's called Malta. And they come to this island, and of course all the prisoners are, are chained up, and, and um, everybody, though, somehow, miraculously, makes it to ground. And when they, they come to this island, they realize that the people there are hungry to hear about God. They're hungry to hear about Jesus Christ. And so even though the Apostle Paul is a prisoner and he is in the, you know, has been in this horrible shipwreck and he's on his way to Rome to go before the emperor, he has the opportunity one more time to tell people all about Jesus Christ. And so he does, and on this island, as I said, they're welcomed very warmly, and people hear about Christ, and I'm positive there were probably great conversions. But um, eventually it was time for them to continue on to Rome. And so the story goes that there was a ship that was um, ported there on the other side of the island and that it was on its way to Rome. They were waiting for um, the, the right season for the weather to be just right. And when the weather was right, then the prisoners and everybody were put on the ship and they were sent off to Rome. When the Apostle Paul reaches Rome, um, he goes before, and I believe, if I'm, if I'm correct, I believe he goes through or goes before Emperor Nero 
And um, he, of course, is again put on trial. And uh, again, they can't find anything to accuse him of other than maybe you know, stirring up some issues with folk. I mean, again, all he wants is for people to know that the hope of the resurrection is through Jesus Christ. So the, the, they just can't really do anything with him. They, he's a Roman citizen. He can't really be put to death according to Roman law. And so he's put in house arrest again. Only this time, the scripture tells us that the house he's put in is pretty nice and that he only has one guard, one soldier watching him. And so he's in house arrest in this house for years and years and years. And basically put there because nobody knows what to do with him. But the thing is, is God does. And so here he is in this gorgeous house, well, fairly nice house, with one soldier watching him, and people begin to come to him. He can't leave, but people can come. And so people come to him, and they sit, and they learn, and they are healed, and they are taught all about God and all about Jesus Christ. And these people are taught, and then they feel compelled, and I'm sure that they go out and they teach others about Christ. And this is how this movement, the way that sit, that sit in this one little area in the Middle East, ended up moving and traveling all around the world, and how we on the other side of the world now know all about God. The thing is, is we now have learned so much about what the Apostle Paul has done that, um, that we are now called by God to go into our communities and into the world to also tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ. The end of, of the book of Acts in the 28th chapter, and actually we're going to read the verses in a little bit, but the very end of the 28th, cha 28th chapter tells all about the Apostle Paul sitting in this, in this home and how right under the nose of the em emperor, the Apostle Paul proclaims the kingdom of God. Now, after years of being in prison, um, the Apostle Paul is eventually um, put to death. He is beheaded, which um, I, I guess I'm not completely understanding Roman law, but according to Roman law, to be beheaded was um, a acceptable way to execute a Roman citizen. Um, everything all along says we don't execute Roman citizens, but somehow it just seemed like they didn't know what else to do with him, and so they beheaded him. And um, in doing that, he, those who were following him probably became even stronger in their convictions to follow Jesus Christ. So we're, like I said, in a bit, we're going to read a little more about, uh, we'll read the scripture, the end scripture of the book of Acts, but there's so much that we can learn about this book, about how we must realize that the Holy Spirit still equips us. We must realize that the church, that the love of God is given to all people, not just a few people who, who attend worship, and that, that through word and through action, we can spread the word of God to all people. So let's move on now and um, go to our time of giving. Our giving highlight this month is our church and office supplies. Um, recently, we bought a fogger. Do you know what a fogger is? Yeah, a fogger, um, it's really nice. We can spray and disinfectant goes on everything. And so we don't have to rely on just wiping and maybe missing something. We um, have a fogger that now will, will disinfect everything. The problem is, is the first fogger we bought was a lemon, and it didn't work. And so we weren't sure what to do with it, but we, we are sending, sending it back and, um, to receive a fogger that does work. But it worked for a little bit, and then it stopped working. But the office, being able to give towards church and office supplies is a great way to support us as um, we have many people coming back into the building. Remember that you may give by um, putting your offering in the, in the plates in the back 
You may give by putting your offering in the mailbox um, just outside the office. You can mail in your offering. If you're online, go to algonaumc.com and click on our online giving toggle. That will send you to Vanco, which is our online giving service. Or if you would like, um, I use the app on my phone. I can help you put an app on your phone and you can give that way if you're used to doing that kind of banking and those kinds of things. Right now, though, let's offer a prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Holy and gracious one, we thank you that our building can be kept clean and can be kept up so that others can use this facility and feel safe. We know that through doing this, we will spread the word of your good news to our community. Today, we ask that as we do, that we glorify you and that we send your name into all the, the places that we can. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we have another special music from our anonymous piano player, and this person is playing in Christ alone. I hope that you enjoy it. It's really quite nice.
I'd say it's one of my favorite songs, but they kind of all are, so, you know. It's like saying I have a favorite Bible verse. They kind of all are. So let's do our children's time, shall we? And we're going to sit right down here, and we're going to have children's time. And if there's any little people that want to join me, please come up, and you can join me. And we're going to, uh, we're going to talk to the big people real quick. Do you want to come? Yeah? It's okay. They're not used to it, because it's been like, what, a whole, over a whole year since we've done this? Yeah? It's okay. So I want to ask, yeah, I want to ask the big people uh, a very important question, and that is, how do you spread the love of God to other people? What do you do? How do you do it? By helping others. That's wonderful. How do you help other people know God loves them? Be kind. Be kind. Mm -hmm. listen. Oh, yes, listening is huge. We have to know what people need. What else? How else do we help people know the love of God? Sharing, Sharing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do believe that that um, telling, actually telling someone Jesus loves you, is really important too. Um, you know, our actions, our words, our attitudes. All are very important to letting someone know about God's love for them. I know that it's hard to tell somebody that God loves them and to especially tell how God loves, how God loves us, what God has done in our lives. I know that's really tough. But I do believe that God opens the door sometimes. That there are people that you meet that maybe it just feels right to say to them, Jesus loves you. And this is what Jesus has done in my life. And that's really hard to do. But I want you to do something, and that is practice. Especially the big people. Did you ever take speech class? You had to practice in the mirror, right? Yep. It's kind of that way with telling others that Jesus loves them. Practice in the mirror. Look at yourself and say Jesus loves you. It's going to do a couple things. It's going to remind you that you are loved by Jesus, but it's also going to help you practice to tell someone else. So let's pray right now, and when we're done, I'm going to have you practice once, okay? Okay, so let's pray right now. Gracious and Holy One, we thank you for the strength, for the ability to be equipped by the Holy Spirit to let others know how much you love them. We thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, before we would greet each other, and I had you do like peace emojis and things like that, but right now I want you to practice once, and I want you to look at somebody, and I don't want you to get up, but just look at somebody, and I want you to tell them Jesus loves you. And if you're online, there's like little heart emojis, and there's all kinds of things that you can do to put out to those who are watching online. So find somebody and tell them Jesus loves you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to send out a heart emoji from our church. Let's do that. You do know that I don't, I do love to play on my phone. I really do. But um, when I'm looking at the phone, um, I'm sending out messages. Oh, I found a little smiley face with hearts all over it. There we go. That's perfect. 
You know, if you're sitting here in the sanctuary uh, during worship, it is perfectly okay to get on your smartphone and um, talk to the people who are watching us. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, tell them, tell them that you miss them and, and that you're glad they're worshiping with us. And people watch during the week, too, so they'll see your messages, too. Our first scripture today is Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. And um, these are, are Jesus, Jesus speaking to the disciples. When he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms have been fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things, and see I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Our second passage comes from that very, very last few chapters of the book of, or chapters, verses from the book of Acts. And this is um, the Apostle Paul sitting, he's sitting in prison, and um, he, this tells about um, how he spreads the words of God right under the emperor's nose. This is Acts 28, verses 23 through 31. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him in his lodgings in great numbers. From morning until evening, he explained the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he had said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other, and as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah, go to this people and say, you will indeed listen, but never understand. And you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing. And they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Let it be known to you that then that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles for they will listen. He lived there, the Apostle Paul lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the Apostle Paul stayed there for... Um, it says two years. Actually, I think he was there even longer. And, and he taught people about Jesus Christ right there with one guard in the middle of Rome. We can learn some things from the Apostle Paul. And I found, um, some time ago, I found this list of 11 things that we can learn from the Apostle Paul. So this is not my work, this is someone else's work, but it just seemed to really fit with what we're learning about Acts and the Apostle Paul. So let's go through them. The first one is that God can use anyone. You do know that the Apostle Paul was Saul and that he actually was someone who drug Christians out of their homes and executed them in the streets. 
And God saw something in the soldier Saul and worked to convert him, and he became the Apostle Paul, and God's grace filled him. And he became one of the greatest, most filled individuals for Jesus Christ that there ever was. So God can use anyone. No matter what you've done or you think you've done, God's grace will fill you, and God will use you. Number two, no one is beyond the saving grace of God. Again, the Apostle Paul was transformed into a completely different person from Saul to Paul. God's grace is for you. If it's for a soldier it, that, that did horrible things against Christians, it's for you as well. Because I know that, that most of us, we think we don't deserve it, but we do. God's grace is for you. Number three is, it's okay if you mess up. Did you know that a lot of the early Christians didn't get baptized until right before their deaths? Like, like minutes before they died? Because they were afraid that if they were baptized and then they did something awful, that their baptism wouldn't work anymore? Well, we know that's not true. Because we all mess up. So if you're not baptized, don't wait till your deathbed. But it's okay if you mess up. The one thing that I tell the confirmation children, I said, is that it's okay if you mess up. It's okay if you get mad at God. It's okay if you do something that you don't think God is proud of. Just don't turn your face from God ever because God can be there and will be there for you. Number four, it says get your priorities straight. The, ap <clears throat> the Apostle Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. We must get our priorities straight. Now, if you're like me, I like my ducks in a row. But sometimes lately, especially lately, my ducks are flying off into other ponds. I don't know why, but they just are. It's okay to have your priorities straight and know that it's okay if your ducks are flying in, into another pond. Just don't turn your face from God. Just stay with God. Number five, what it takes to be um, with God forever. The Apostle Paul knew that no matter what, that God was with him. And that no matter what he did or no matter what happened in his life, God was walking beside him always. Number six, our past don't define us. The Apostle Paul could have sit and, and really thought, you know, dwelled on how horrible life had been for him and, and how he made life horrible for others, but he didn't dwell on that. In fact, in Philippians 3.13, he says, forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead. So look ahead. Know that God has a future for you filled with hope and love. Number seven, the Apostle Paul teaches us the importance of quiet to know that we must take time to pray and be quiet before God and to know who God is and to know the power of the resurrection. Number eight, how to care for others. The Apostle Paul, no matter what, even if his life was in danger, he cared for others. He went out and he went back to Rome and even though he knew his life was at risk, he went there to teach others about God. So go out into the world and care for others. Number nine is all about humility. We learn about humility through the Apostle Paul. Philippians 3.12 says, Not that I have already obtained this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ has took hold of me. The Apostle Paul never bragged on himself. It was all about what God was doing through him. The tenth is to be content in every situation. Oh my, that's hard. But we can learn that from the Apostle Paul. I mean, the guy was beaten. He lived well. He was starving at times. He ate well. He was in a shipwreck. He, was, uh, he, he rode in, in fabulous, wonderful ships. He lived in prisons. He lived in a beautiful house. He had it all at one time or another, and yet he was content in everything, knowing that it's not about him, but it's about God. 
And the last, number 11, we learn from the Apostle Paul to stand firm in Christ. He writes in Philippians, our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lovely bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Stand firm in Christ. Know that you have that firm foundation in Jesus Christ and that no matter what happens in your life, you have that to stand upon. So these 11 things that we learn about through the Apostle Paul, I think are important ways for us to live our lives. And if you want a copy of those 11 things, I'd be happy to send that out to you because I think it, it, they're, they're important. It's amazing that the Apostle Paul teaches us that. Well, I have a love-hate relationship with the Apostle Paul, and I always have, because there are things that I read about him, and I go, oh my goodness. And there are other things that I read, and I think, yes, he's got it. So I hope that you read more about him, and that you take time to read the book of Acts, and learn about the early church, and about how we today can learn how to be church, and how to be a community of Christ through them. Let's pray, shall we? O oh, gracious and holy one, we ask that you fill us with your love and with knowledge of your Holy Spirit, that you equip us with the ability to, to tell others of who you are and who you mean and what you mean to us. It is through you that we lift this time. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so right now, I want you to stand and we're going to sing number 322. It is up from the grave he arose. And it gets kind of high at times, so just sing out. God doesn't care if we're off key or if we're loud or whatever we are. Just sing because God is with us.
So don't forget today that right after worship, confirmation is meeting in the library. I believe high school, Sunday school is also, sorry, I'm moving around. High school, Sunday school is, move, is um, meeting downstairs in the basement. Um, the Christian Ed Committee meets this afternoon in the, or right after worship, in the conference room. And then at 11 o'clock, if you'd like to join us for the 5, 10, 20 meeting, the, the brainstorming about the future of this church, at 11 o'clock we'll be in the fellowship hall. So we have lots of things to do to um, be part and, and work, go forward with our congregation. Remember that you have power in the Holy Spirit. God has equipped you with knowledge and words, though you might not think you always have them, but words to tell others about who God is and who God is to you. Go out and tell everybody you meet. May you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be filled with the love of Jesus Christ. And all the people shouted, Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday afternoon. Bye, everybody. Goodbye online. Mm.